Greetings everyone, welcome to the virtual office hours. My name is John Fee, I teach American history here at Messiah College. Abby Blakeney, our producer, uh, is as usual behind the camera. We have the founding fathers with us. As some of you have been watching the last couple weeks, George Washington bobblehead has replaced the George Washington Pez dispenser. Um, the Pez dispenser is back here. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. Maybe one day we'll get that in, uh, get, replace him. But no one has commented on the George Washington bobblehead. So, uh, you know, I'm very disappointed by that. No one seems to have noticed. Anyway, we've been going through this idea that America uh, has always seen itself as a Christian nation. Uh, and we've been picking up on some of the themes of my book, Was America Founded as a Christian Nation, which will be coming out in a second edition sometime this summer. So we're revisiting some of those themes. Uh, today, I want to talk about two fundamentalists. Uh, we'll call this a tale of two fundamentalists, both who promoted the idea that America was a Christian nation. Uh, the first one uh, is a man named William Jennings Bryan. Some of you are familiar with him. I have this picture from Harper's Weekly framed and hanging up in my office. Uh, Bryan, as you know, was a populist very strongly uh, defended the rights, uh, economic rights and economic uh, uh, success, if you will, of the farmers and working class people in the late 19th century, ran for president multiple times. Uh, much of his economic uh, mission, his idea that, you know, we need to monetize silver, uh, we need to distribute more wealth so that the, so that the poor uh, will have access to it and farmers and lower middle class people. Uh, a lot of this came right out of his Christian ideals. He believed that we must follow the teachings of Jesus, we must fight for the least of these, if you will. And when we began to we begin to solve the economic inequality problems in late 19th century and early 20th century America, the problems created by these large corporations, uh, Brian thought that he would in some ways be promoting a Christ, more Christian nation. And as a post-millennialist, uh, Brian believed that one day Jesus Christ would return, but he would only return when Christians had worked hard enough in solving some of these social problems. So in many ways, William Jennings Bryan uh, and the economic populism that he promoted uh, really plays into his vision for uh, America being a more Christian uh, and more moral nation. In some ways, uh, Bryan reminds me a lot of, at least in some of his rhetoric, of the Democratic candidate today, Bernie Sanders, who's running for the Democratic nomination. Of course, they differ on a lot of things, and I would never say that Sanders is trying to promote some type of a Christian nation. But the economic populist rhetoric is very, very similar. Uh, they come from different sources, you know, Sanders versus uh, Brian. But nevertheless, here's one fundamentalist, interestingly enough, conservative evangelical. Uh, we know him from the Scopes trial and defending, um, defending creation against uh, evolution. Uh, so we know he's theologically conservative, but a lot of his economic ideas are very much wedded to his view of Christian America. The second person we want to discuss is the evangelist Billy Sunday. Uh, one, again, one of the true characters in American religious history. Uh, we could spend a lot of time talking about uh, some of his antics. He's a convert, former baseball player, converts to Christianity, and then goes on these worldwide, or I should say nationwide, speaking tours, preaching the gospel, and fighting against what he might describe as demon rum or, or alcohol use. He's a strong advocate of prohibition. What's interesting about San, uh, Sunday is... Sunday is a pre-millennialist. Uh, in other words, he believes that one day Jesus, of course, will return, but the world is going downhill. The world is filled with sinners. One day Jesus is going to come and rapture everybody, bring everybody up to heaven. At least this is one version of pre-millennialism, and the world will come to an end. So it's very, very hard to, to see a pre-millennialist wanting to sort of create a Christian nation or work for moral reform. Why do that is the logic when pretty soon Jesus is going to come back and wrap it all up anyway. Uh, Sunday's a little bit of a unique premillennialist in this sense, simply because he not only has this view of the last days, of an imminent return of Jesus Christ, but he also believes it's necessary to fight for reform uh, in terms of promoting uh, prohibition uh, as well. So you have two fundamentalists here. Uh, both of them want to promote a Christian nation, Theologically, both of them are willing to do battle royale, so to speak, uh, against the fundamental or against the modernists, uh, you know, for the for control of the denominations. 
Uh, they have slightly different economic understandings, but both of them uh, are pushing moral reform and the salvation of people through the gospel uh, to promote the idea that America is indeed founded or was or is a Christian nation. So two interesting case studies today, and we will continue to move into the 20th century as we pick things up next week. Thanks for watching, everyone.